Let's take the next step in our use of Jitja templates within our Flask applications and incorporate templating into the handlers that uh, sort of display the time validation form and then validate the form when we created these in an earlier lesson. So the code here is the same as you've seen before. And what I want to do now is take this form, this big, long, ugly string, and I want to incorporate that into a template and then refactor the code below to use templates. So the first thing I want to do is to create a template to hold this, uh, this, this code right here, the HTML there. So let's create a new template in our templates directory. I'm going to call this time form.html. And since we're in templates now and we're not, uh, we don't have to bear the burden of lots of ugly text when we, when we add a properly formatted HTML document, let's go ahead and just go ahead and make a fully formed, properly structured HTML document, which we've been a little bit lazy about before, to be honest. Okay, so that's just the bare bones HTML. Let me come back and grab this form. Just gonna cut this out and paste that in here. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and put this style tag up in the header, just because that's probably a better place for it to live. Great. Um, okay, so actually now in here, I can remove these double, these double braces. Those double braces were there before, in order to uh, prevent these these curly braces from being interpreted as um, as a formatting string when we were using the string.format uh, stuff within um, within uh, the Python file. When we're in a Jinja template form, they actually don't need to be escaped in that way. What I do want to do though is while I'm in here, I want to come down and look at the places where I had formatting placeholders previously and make each of those double curly braces. So that's, you know, recall that's Jinja's way of interpreting that as, a, as an expression that it should evaluate and look for, you know, in these cases, parameters that have been passed into the template. So let's go ahead and, and double these up because we're still going to want to pa pass these in the same way we did previously. Okay, did we get them all? That looks pretty, pretty good. Now let's come back to our main.py and refactor this code to use this new template. So I can delete that global form variable and let me get rid of this uh, form dot format call. And now I just want to go ahead and get the template here using Jinja env. And then I can return as before template dot render. And that will fetch the HTML file and render the contents of it, inserting any data that we pass it. Here, we don't have anything we want to pass it at this point. Uh, we, you know, there's no, there's no data that's being validated, no error messages, anything like that. We just want to return the template as it is. So let's go ahead and start our application up and see, um, see where we're at. Okay, so I'm going to go back to localhost colon 5000 and navigate to the validate time form. Okay, it looks like I have a syntax error. Um, this is going to be an unexpected curly brace. And let's go ahead and work through this. Sometimes we, uh, you know, we, we make these videos and sometimes if we have an unexpected error, we'll, we'll just kind of edit it out. But um, we want to show you that sometimes we'll have errors too. So let's just go ahead and, and look at this particular one. So let's see, it looks like it's happening in the parsing of my Jinja template is when this syntax error is occurring. So let's look at this template and make sure we formatted everything correctly. Oh, actually there's the culprit right there and there. I have uh, I'm missing my second closing curly brace on each of those two. And if I check the other two, those look okay. All right, so let's go back and refresh and there we go. So our template, uh, rendered correctly that time. Notice one thing though, when I built this template, I put in these placeholders for, for values that will potentially be passed in. But when I rendered the template, I didn't have to give it those empty strings at all. When we, when we were using string.format, we had to pass in any named placeholders when we called string.format. When I'm using a template though, if this parameter does not exist, if it's not passed into the template, 
Um, it'll just be set to the empty string basically when this template renders. So it's a little bit less work for me there. I don't have to pass in say, you know, hours equals the empty string, even though I'm referencing um, uh, a data value called hours in the template itself. Okay, so that makes life a little easier for us. Okay, so that will render the form and we can, uh, now we need to go down and, and refactor the place where we re-render the template upon validation errors. So let's go do that. Um, down here I have my other time form .format, and this one actually inserts values for all four of these parameters. So I will want to basically keep those, those same parameters, um, but I'll want to insert them into a template. So let's get the template. Okay, and then I can wipe out the time format, time form dot format call and say return template dot render. And I can keep the rest of this stuff because I've kept the names of these parameters and uh, I'm still going to use them when I pass it in. So um, that should all work as is. Let's go ahead and, and check this out and we'll refresh and then put in a time. And I'm going to make sure I get a validation error just so I can see if this works. Okay, so that seems to have worked. Uh, let's make a validation here, error here. Okay, and now just for kicks, let's go ahead and actually enter a valid one in. Okay, great. So we just refactored our form to use uh, a timeform.html Jinja template. And we took note of the fact that when we render a template, if we don't pass in the values of every single, um, of every single piece of data that's referenced in the template via these double curly brace expressions, then those will just be interpreted as empty strings when the template is rendered. All right, so in our next lesson, we're going to see some more sophisticated use of Jinja templates, and we're going to look at control, control structures like loops and conditionals within templates as well as we build a, in a, a, a sort of new mini application. So that's coming up next.